A barrier breaking first on Long Island. Today, a fire department created back in 1898 swore in its first Afro-Latino fire commissioner. In a very diverse community, African-American leaders say that's reason to celebrate. CBS 2's Carolyn Gussoff has his story. So help me God. His extended family and his fire department family applauded Rasheen Rock Williams in an historic first. One of Long Island's most diverse communities, Brentwood, is 85% Hispanic and black, but has never had a black fire commissioner in its 125 year history. Until now, Williams is black and Latino. I'm very humble about it. I accept the mantle, but that's not what I ran for. I ran to do right by my community. He began saving lives just out of high school. Me and my cousins were walking by the firehouse and we was like, I wonder what's in there. So they dare me. In there, he found leaders who took him under their wing, sharing values of courage, honor, and respect. To learn the craft to be a firefighter, you have to put the knowledge in. You have to study, you have to learn. And then you also gotta show up. He's been showing up, risking his life for decades. A recent injury ended his firefighting days, but launched this new chapter. Thank you, Chief. All right. we do well up here. The community elected him to serve among the five commissioners. In this community that's so diverse, you know, for this to happen now, and for him to take over as a commission is very big for the community. It speaks to the over almost 125 years of no representation of African Americans or people of color in an elected position here. So this is a momentous occasion. It's a great occasion. Williams hopes his election sends a positive message. No matter where you're from, you can, if you put your mind to it and you train, you can become anything. But you have to do the work. Williams says community members often think they're paid. They're not. They're volunteers. The hope is his leadership here will help recruit sorely needed new members. In Brentwood, Long Island, Carolyn Gussoff, CBS 2 News.